jumping from polar to Cartesian, now using equations. R equals 9. Can you guess how does R equals 9 looks like? From the idea we just explained that R is a distance from the pole. R equals 9. What that can be? That's equation. It's not a point anymore. What does this describe? R equals 9. Can you imagine? Distance from the pole is 9. What is that? Someone is saying, I can hear it. It's a circle. Basically, you want to explain to uh, a blind person what does it mean to have the same distance from the pole, right? A person does not see the picture. That's, I like to explain this way. How would you explain using science uh, or intuitively to a person who does not see? And we actually had several f amazing genius mathematicians who were blind at some point. And either their family was writing notes for them or their classmates. So they became amazing mathematicians and they make breakthrough innovations. So r equals 9 is distance away from the pole. It's always 9. Let's see what it means. Check it out. Pole is at 0, 0. R is a distance away from 0. So it's over here, right? R is 9. Is this not what you imagined? So what did you imagine? Oh, over here? Okay, that's also r equals 9. This is not what you imagined. You, did you imagine this one? Well, all of them are correct. Whatever is away for 9 units from the pole gives you this equation. So how to describe this um, shape? It's a circle. All the infinitely many points that are away from the pole by 9 units, they organize together in a circle. They create a circle. Does that make sense? Very interesting. So with a fixed height, with a fixed uh, distance away from the pole, but no fixed angle, you have all the possible opportunities that create a circle. Let's prove that. So if we want to jump from polar, polar to Cartesian, I gave you the formulas. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. r is given. That's an equation, by the way. r equals 9 is equation. It has an equal sign, as you can see. Now, I know what's going on. x squared plus y squared equals 9 squared. Well, that is a circle. And you can even describe it. What circle is that? Can you tell me what circle is that? Answer. r equals 9 is a circle what? Who want to say? Centered at zero zero correct what else that's not enough see circles can be big and small what else radius that's the second feature of the circle radius what nine well how how big the radius is for the circle nine so now we know okay so r equals nine is the way to describe a circle. It's so much better than using x squared plus y squared equals 9 squared. And that's why you will see that complicated shapes, x squared and y squared, sines and cosines, they convert into polar with like this short, nice notation, r is 9. That's it. Very cool, because if you want to solve for x, that gives you plus and minus square root. If you want to solve for y, that is plus and minus square root. Circles don't even pass horizontal and vertical tests to be counted as a function. Circle is not a function because it's not one to one. If you don't remember what I'm talking about, you should pass a vertical test, you should pass horizontal test, <laughs> only have to cross one point, and it doesn't. So we use plus and minus square roots. But in polar, it's r equals nine. Brilliant. It's very nice, convenient short. And that's why it's highly used for rotations. Next one. How about this one? This was example one. Example two, so now I will be asking you more. I try to think about it. It's actually pretty creative to think. Plot. This time let's plot. Plot r equals 6 sine theta. Crazy. What is 6 sine theta can be? 6 sine theta. So now it's not very clear. Um, there's a connect. This is equation. r equals something of theta. So we'll have to figure out how to plot it. We're going to do this idea. So 
they want us to figure out the shape in Cartesian. Plot. Solution. Let's go from polar to Cartesian. Maybe you was thinking to create something like a square both sides, sides of the equation, like we did in the previous exam. Yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. The new idea will be to multiply both sides by R. Let's do that. Multiply by two, both sides by R. Then we will have r times r, which gives you r squared. 6 times r cosine theta. So I multiplied by r, both sides. Maybe it's not visual enough. Let me put it in green. Multiplied by r, both sides. Now I have this interesting, cool equation r squared equals 6r sine theta. Well, both sides have a corresponding equation for Cartesian coordinates. r squared has its own formula. What is r squared for x and y? x squared and y squared. Yes, very good. How about 6r sine theta? So in the previous chapter, we were getting rid of t which was parameter, now we have two parameters, theta and r. We go trying to get rid of those both at the same time. So your answer shouldn't have any r and theta at the end. So what do you think we should do with 6r sine? Yes? R sine, r sine theta equals 1. It equals y, exactly amazing. Someone usually notices, makes a uh, good job. This is y, let me go back to formulas. In general, if you don't know what to do, I will not go back to formulas. I will make the line like so, and I will write for you down. This chapter doesn't have lots of formulas. For now, we only know several things. We have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If you're stuck in this chapter, just write down everything we know. There's not so many things. Tangent theta is y over x. We know that. And then we know what x is. It's r cosine theta. And we know what y is. It's r sine theta. In this whole chapter, Usually you stare at these formulas for like 10 minutes and some of them just need to be used. That's it. So as you can see, we used formula number one. We did not use tangent theta and we used, we're going to use one of those two formulas, X and Y. Here you go. R sine is actually gives us Y. It's a Y coordinate. So equation becomes X squared plus Y squared equals 6Y. Missed 6. 6y. That is the shape um, we have in Cartesian. Kind of not very clear what it is, though. So that's going to be the last point to figure out. What the heck is x squared plus y squared equals 6y? If you were good in geometry, but I also don't know if you guys have geometry classes anymore. But if you were good in geometry, then you know this shape. If not, we're going to have to do some manipulations to figure it out. Step one, move everything to the left x squared plus y squared minus 6y equals to 0. Step 2 is your least favorite step. Full squared. x squared plus. How to create full squared after out of y squared minus 6y? y squared minus 6y plus 9. People like, where did the 9 come from? Minus 9 equals to 0. I'm trying to create full square. There are several ways to teach how to create full square. Either you know your own or just Google one of these. What I do, I figure out that 3 is missing. 3 multiplied by 2 gives you 6. So it's going to be perfect double product with negative sign, blah, blah, blah. So to add 3 squared, I'm adding 9. But you cannot add things and get a move on. You have to subtract them as well. So I added 9 and I subtracted 9. If you're very confused with this part, there's lots of videos explaining how to create full squared. But the whole point is that now this is y minus 3 squared. Complete the squared. I think that's how they call it in your educational system. Complete the squared. So the equation becomes x squared plus y minus 3 squared minus 9. Or x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals to 9. 
Pom, pom, pom. This is the equation you're supposed to recognize. What is that? What do you think is that? It's a circle. I hear people whispering. Centered where? Yes. Zero and three. Good job. Radius. Radius three. R is three. So now we know the shape. They told us to plot. They told us to plot. Thus, if I want to plot this unusual looking function as R equals six sine theta, that is apparently a circle. That is a circle. That's crazy. R equals si six sine theta is a circle shifted up by three units. Instead of zero, zero, it shifted up to zero, three. So that is a new center. And the radius is three. So the circle looks like this. The radius is three. You can also check the points. So if you don't want to go to the Cartesian coordinates, you can also draw it like so. The very old fashioned way, plug points and see what's going to happen. This is the second way of doing it. Let's plug when R, when theta, when theta is zero, sine of zero gives you zero, R is zero. When theta is pi over, so plot zero. When theta is pi over two, sine of pi over two is one. Six times one is six. So radius, which is how far away from the pole, is here six units up at pi over two, which is exactly that angle pi over two. What are the angles I can check? I can check angle pi. What is happening like over here? Pi. Well, sine of pi is zero, so it goes back to zero height. That is the idea. What is happening at three pi over two? Well, minus six, because we have minus one from sine. Minus six is coming from r, or oh, how far I am. r should not be negative, so we still mean positive. So how far I am from the center, and so on. I actually should point this out. This is the same point. Same point. Like so. So you can do both ways. Either Well, you can do three ways. Using graphing calculator, it actually knows polar equations. You're plugging the points or converting it back to Cartesian coordinates. That is also makes sense. So in general, there's a formula for circles. Check it out, very interesting. Circles have its formula. Circles are not just x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It has a formula that looks like this. a squared equals r squared plus c squared minus 2rc times cosine. And cosine has a shift theta minus theta sub zero. That is a circle with the r, the center away from this length. The, how far I am from the pole, and theta is the angle. No need to memorize, though. That's just to know, just to, for fun. There are more complicated formulas for the shapes we know so well. That's my point. What do you think about that? Kind of pretty cool ideas. Um, more shapes are coming. Let me show you in here.